Good morning. Welcome to Tulsa City County's Library's Tools for Building Business Series. Uh, so glad that you could join us this morning. Uh, my name is Martha Gregory, and I'm with the Tulsa City County Library's Research Center. Before we start, I want you to know that this event is being recorded, as will be the remaining two programs in this series. This is the third one of the five sessions in the series, and recordings of all of them will be available for you to access on the library's YouTube channel. All participants except the speakers are in listen-only mode. We will use Zoom's Q&A feature for asking questions and getting answers. So please submit your questions as you think of them, and to do so, just click on the Q&A at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And our guest speaker will answer questions periodically throughout the presentation. Everyone who's registered for this event and or the series will get a link to each event a day or two prior to the event. The library uh, is a treasure trove of amazing resources for our business community. Uh, the Reference USA system is among the most popular. Uh, this event and the next two programs uh, scheduled through September 9 will really open your eyes and your minds to some of the most useful research tools available for business. Reference USA, like most of our databases, is on the library's website, available 24-7 from any place, anytime, free to library card holders. And if you want to get a card, just go to our website at tulsalibrary.org, where you can order a free card online. You only have to work in, be a student in, or live in Tulsa County to qualify. So it's very easy to get one. Reference USA is a heavyweight. Its group of databases has something for everyone. And with it, you can find new customers. You can know your competitors. You can analyze business markets. Um, and of course, today you're going to learn about its secrets for helping you to grow your business. It's simply, it's absolutely a list of can-dos, an endless list. We are pleased to have with us Bill Carlson from Info Group in Omaha, Nebraska to showcase Reference USA. Bill has been with Info Group since 2008. And during those years, he's worked with public libraries all over the country, teaching their customers how to use the Reference USA system. Bill will now show us how to explore Reference USA for growing your business. Bill? Thanks, Martha. Thank you so much. Let me grab the, the share screen and I'll show everyone my Reference USA screen. You should be seeing it here momentarily. There it is, and share. So you should be seeing the Tulsa City County Library logo here on the Reference USA homepage. These are all of the various modules that we make available through the library. Of course, today we'll focus on the US business module. And the beautiful thing is once you understand how to search one of these, they all search the same way. Of course, you're using different criteria to drive in the results that you would ultimately want to see, but the processes are the same across the board. So just a couple of items real quick here for housekeeping. The Reference USA logo is your home key. Anytime you'd like to get back to this page, you can select that. We do have under the About Us a three and a half minute video that would walk you through how we verify our business data. So that might be something you would want to check out. We also answer questions, you know, Monday through Friday. Our hours of operation are eight to five, Monday through Friday. And you could reach out to us either during business hours or certainly afterwards, and we'll respond back to you the next day. All that information is under the contact us. We do also offer webinars that are open to the public. We have some YouTube videos out there, as well as some terrific training guides. So if you would benefit from the information in written form, you could certainly take advantage of those training guides. I also like to point out the fact that we have an app. So if you would like to download the app and you want to access us at some point in time, you would put in your zip code. It'll present to you the area's libraries. 
you would click on the one that is your library and then you would have access to that information. And at this point in time, it is the US business database that's available in there as well as the consumer lifestyles information. We also give you the ability to register for a personalized account and then, and by the way, it's not a shortcut. You don't, you, you would still log in through the library's website and access us that way. And once you're there or here, you can log in and you can get access to saving your searches and coming back to them at whatever point in time is important to you. And there are some different update schedules for this information. For example, the US business information, we push live any new information that we verify about a business and we do it weekly. So every Thursday into Friday morning, that information is being pushed live. So it's possible if you saved a search and came back to it, let's say a couple of months later, it's, it's, it's highly possible that that information has been changed to a little degree one way or the other. Maybe you had a thousand records initially and now there's a thousand one or 998 because a couple of them were moved out of the, the verified status. That information is being updated weekly, the historical at the end of the year, beginning of the following year. The Canadian businesses is monthly. Our jobs and internships, that's nightly. Our US new business filings, so these are through the Secretary of State's office. It's not very robust information because we haven't verified it yet, but you can certainly get access to that information and it's updated weekly. Whereas the US healthcare, the standard white pages, the consumer lifestyles, and the Canadian white pages are all updated monthly. And lastly, our new movers and new homeowners. If your, if your business requires you to obviously explore and try and identify new potential customers, this is a great tool to use because you can go into that tool and identify those people that are new to your community. And you get to define how far away these people may have come to your city. So there's a few different ways that you can select that information. And if we have time, I'll certainly show you that. This is updated weekly. It's housed in here for a year, but updated weekly. So with that said, let me open up the US business. As I mentioned, no matter what, it's all set up the same. So we always come to this quick search tab first. In this example, we could look up maybe one particular company and be able to identify uh, that the information that we have about that company, their address, who that owner or manager might be, number of employees, what their sales volumes are, line or lines of business that they're in, etc. You could even use the executive first name, last name search. Maybe you worked with an executive at one point in time with a different company and they've, you understand that that person is no longer there. You could certainly try and do that last name, first name. Be great if you know what city they're in or state uh, to narrow that down a little bit more. So you could certainly look at all businesses in any given city or state and even do a reverse phone number lookup. I do want to show you one tool real quickly, and this might be used in a variety of different ways. I'm just going to look at all businesses across Tulsa. And you have over 30,000 of them, if I, yep, 30,163. And these are all verified businesses. We do have unverifieds, and I'll talk about that here in a moment. The tool I want to show you specifically is the charts tool. What this will do in this scenario is it will pull up the top seven types of businesses across your community. So it gives you a quick, read on those businesses. 
top one are physicians and surgeons. They're all 1099 guys and gals. That's why there are, are so many of them. And this is exactly how it looks like in my community as well. We have a lot of hospitals, we have a lot of clinics, research institutions. In your case, it's followed by attorneys, then restaurants, nurse practitioners, insurance companies, churches, and dentists uh, fill out the seventh position. If we were in Omaha, the seventh position would be that of ATMs, those automated teller machines. So I will show you how you could in fact exclude anything that you didn't want to see in your results. Let's imagine on a smaller scale, you were looking at a few specific types of of uh, businesses or types of business, you could get that produced and maybe you'd have the top three because there aren't seven, right? Uh, it will break it down in terms of the most of those followed by those that are in second place and third place. So know that you can use this tool a variety of ways. I can even switch it up to look at the number of employees. Right now I'm using the SIC code as my, my driver here. That stands for Standard Industry Classification Code, and it is a system that Uncle Sam uh, employed back in the 40s. It was technically replaced by this NAICS code. You may have heard of that. That's the North American Industrial Classification System, and that's a code that, in fact, when Bill Clinton first became president, he signed that very first North American trade agreement between us, Mexico, and Canada. That was born as a result of that. They needed a coding system that all three countries could use so that they could call an apple an apple no matter where it came from and went to. So that is available as well. But let's do the number of employees. Let's get that breakdown. So one to four is the largest in your community, much like it is here in Omaha at 60%, followed by five to nine. So it goes right in order as you can see here. But I'll show you how some of those numbers may turn upside down when you're looking at specific types of industries. This is all printable or can be made part of a, a PowerPoint presentation. And if you scroll down, it does give you some of those larger employers in the area, along with the breakdown of all of those employment ranges that we have with, a, with corresponding records. So know you can get to all of that information pretty readily just using this charts feature. I'm going to revise my search, and instead of spending much time here in quick search, most of the time people are in advanced search, and by the way, additional filters goes to the same place. It'll open up a new window. It will present many different filter options, and they're all on this left-hand column. Now, certainly you don't need to fill in all of them, but you might want to use a few of them to get very specific with the type of information that you're ultimately going to see. I do want to point out the difference between this company name option and what we saw on Quick Search, this simply allows you to do multiple companies by name. So if you wanted IBM, for example, you could add that to your list. If you wanted Starbucks, for an exam another example, you can add that to your list and keep adding so you can create your own unique list of businesses by name in whatever geography you want to select. So no, you can do that, but otherwise we'll always give you the company name. We'll always give you this executive information as well. Maybe, maybe you only want to see businesses with a certain title uh, of that person that's responsible for that location. So if you wanted the owner, for example, you could drive in just those records that have an owner present. That's one of those verification questions that we ask of every business. Who is the owner or manager of your location? So 
if that would be something you would want to use as a filter, you could certainly do so. If you would accept perhaps a manager as well, you could look for records that have at least an owner or manager present. So know that you can certainly use those as filters. Otherwise, we'll always give you all of this information. Keyword is generally how most people do a search, but you can use the major industry group, and I'll show, show you that in a second here. These are all the various ways that we can select our geography. Lots of times it's just a matter of looking in a particular city. Sometimes people want to look in the metro area. If you had just a few, maybe one or two or three zip codes you wanted to use, you could certainly do that. You can do a radius search. So maybe you wanted to put in your business address and then pull up certain businesses within a certain radius of your business. You could do that. Can certainly look at it across an entire county, even census tracts, of course, with a street address and or even a neighborhood. So it just depends. I will show you this map based search tool. This particular tool is available in many of our modules. Phone will always give you this phone information will always give you the number of employees. And now when we're making our verification phone calls, about 72% of those businesses will give us an exact number. Those that don't will actually look at their peers and will apply a range. So if you see an exact number, we got that in our phone call. If you see a range, know that we applied that because they chose not to provide that information to us. And as it relates to sales volume, that's information that we put together in an algorithm. We don't ask uh, companies, small businesses, how much they're making and not have that phone call end rather abruptly. So we'll gather that information via a, a algorithm and we're using information we get in that phone call, like number of employees, like the type of business they're in, like how long they've been in business, where they're physically in business at because of the variables with expenses, depending on where businesses are doing business. So we gather all that information along with some information we get through the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and that's what applies that algorithm. Now, if it's a publicly traded uh, company like we're seeing under ownership here, of course, then we'll provide that information that we get through their 10K report in order to populate that sales volume. But know if it's a private company that that's information that we have put together with an algorithm. So we'll give you this ownership information. If in fact you wanted to look at or exclude home-based businesses, maybe you were doing a search of a particular area there in Tulsa, and you might be also including uh, neighborhoods where you might have home-based businesses. If you did not want to include them, you could exclude those businesses, or conversely here, you could look at just home-based businesses. So know that you can certainly filter out or in. The, so we'll give you certainly all that information, the financial information, the business expenditures, just like with the sales volume information. This is also information that's put together using an algorithm based again on some of those other filters that we use or factors we use. Special selects, you know, maybe in, maybe as part of your business, you need to be able to find newer businesses in your community. Years in the database is a great way to do that versus the year established. If you're looking for older companies, this is certainly a terrific one to use, but if you're looking for those relatively new ones, you can come in and say, hey, show me all the businesses across Tulsa that have opened within the last two years. So those are the businesses that we've been able to verify and and create a complete record for. Notice it's always defaulting to that verified. I could include unverified. So businesses, maybe we never reach them, or maybe they were verified it in year one, but we weren't able to get them uh, verified the following year. We'll put them in that unverified status 
you may well know they're still in business. You might even be able, and I'll show you how you can update, share with us an update about any record. So know you can use that years in the database as a filter if you would like. Professionals, all or one. This is really referring to, and the reason we added this filter is our libraries were telling us that in some cases, when patrons were creating a search in an area that might include, for example, attorneys or doctors or uh, CPAs, they didn't necessarily want to reach every attorney in an office. They wanted to just reach the primary one. If that's the case, you can switch it from all, which it automatically defaults to, to one, and that'll produce less records, fewer records, and then ultimately help you uh, in terms of the cost savings if you were going to be doing a mailer to those businesses. So know that that's a filter you could use. And we have these exclusion filters. Notice I can exclude previously saved searches as well. So you can, you can omit virtually anything. Maybe you were looking at all of Tulsa County, but you wanted to omit just Tulsa and see the other cities in the county. You could omit just Tulsa. It just depends on how you want to frame it. In this case, I mentioned that here in Omaha, we had those ATMs. Make it plural, look for that definition, which is right here, automated teller machine. There's the SIC code that supports all of those, but you just need to know that definition. You can click on that, add it there, and then whatever other filters you put in place, they will always be excluding those automated teller machines. So know that you can exclude virtually any kind of business. Uh, and we do call automated teller machines a business because of the transaction. We have red boxes in there. We have kiosks in there. So you can exclude anything you would like. Let me just do a simple search. And I'm going to first use the major industry group. I have... Uh, a, a dear friend who uses the database through the Dallas Public Library, and he sells products to contractors. So I had shown him this search several years ago, and he's interested in these general contractors and certainly some of these special trade contractors. So you can see by clicking on these plus symbols, it starts to break it down even further. So it goes from the initial two digit code to the four digit that Uncle Sam used. Well, we took it a step further. We added two additional codes to that. That's why we keep this still alive because it's very, very useful information because it's so granular. You can get to all kinds of special specialty kinds of contractors based on what you need. If you just have a patio or a porch or a deck uh, enclosure that you'd like to uh, reach out to those kinds of businesses, you could find those specific types of contractors. In his case, he's looking for all these general contractors. So he selects this option. It checks all of these boxes and then he sells his product across the United States but he does it by region so he focuses on certain areas if we were looking let's look across your county at those kinds of contractors how many might he find if he were looking for and you could drive in some other factors here as well let's say your state and then we'll just do and you can just scroll down if you'd like to find tulsa here you can do it either way and there's my Tulsa. I can click on that. It adds it. Maybe I wanted to add in another uh, county. I could be adding in as many counties as, as I'd like. I know that you all aren't too awfully far away from Arkansas. So if I wanted to go to a county over in Arkansas as well, I could drive in that. Or I could do a, a city in Arkansas. It just depends on how I want to frame this. But we're just going to look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
So I have a total of 848 general contractors across the county. So if I want to get to those particular records, now he does phone calls himself, but there are those folks that also want to do mailers. So it just depends on how you would like to do that. You can certainly click here next to company name and advance to the next page. And it does say how many records you can download at a time or print. So since there are 848, I could do four download events of 250 in the first three and then the remaining in that last one. So it's as simple as clicking here it grabs all those records. I can advance to the next page, grab those records. So there's 25 records per page. I'm already at page four. I can go to page 10 to grab all of these records. So you just have to keep selecting this and you can get pretty darn uh, fast at being able to do that. Now I've got my 250, so I'm ready to go with my download. At that point in time, you would select that, and I would suggest that if you're going to take out multiple groups of 250, what I would encourage you to do is to select and open up your own version of Excel, and you can do a copy and paste from my page into yours. If you're going to make mailing labels, this is definitely where you want to leave it. And the summary as it relates here for step two will give you this pertinent information, including that owner or manager, what their name is, their title, uh, number, the, the type of business that they're in, number of employees, sales volumes. There is a unique identifier for each and every record, so that's in there. If that's all you need, you can select download records. And at that point in time, here's my Excel document. Mine is static, I can't keep adding to it. So you would simply, before moving around these cells and, and, and making it so that you can see clearly everything that's in each cell, I would suggest simply coming up here to the upper left-hand corner with your mouse, in between cell one and A, click there, do a copy, and then uh, go over to your Excel spreadsheet, maximize it, and paste that information in on yours. Once you've done that, you can minimize yours, come up here to the left and close mine. It leaves you right here. Then you simply go back, and now I've got to get rid of all these check marks. Easiest way to do that is revise search. It doesn't forget how you build it. And then you can just view those results again. And you left, notice all of the check marks are gone. You can simply go up here to this number box, this page number box, and type in 11, because I did one through 10, type in 11 and you can begin getting more of that information out of the database, another group of 250. So you can do that as much as you'd, you'd like. And, and, it's, and, and, and then obviously go about doing whatever you need to do with that Excel document. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make mailing labels or you're just gonna use that as a call sheet or maybe you're going to, uh, it is compatible and you can make it so with Salesforce. So you could put that in to a Salesforce platform if you use that. So a lot of different ways that you can use the data. I also have the ability, remember we talked about the charts. I now, and I'm only looking at one type, one line of business. I can chart this and, in, and, and it's gonna give me those breakdowns by construction companies, general contractors, home builders, et cetera. So I can get that information. I can certainly see that full report down here. There are seven pages of those with all of those primary SIC codes. And I can even look at it from that employment standpoint. So one to four is in fact the top 
in this particular industry at 60, almost 63%, followed by five to nine, 10 to 19, et cetera. So again, I can print this off. I can make it part of a PowerPoint presentation. You may even want to look at it from a sales volume standpoint. Maybe if you're going to be selling to these businesses, you want to look at and see. So you've got a great group here at almost 44% that is doing between a million and 2.5 million. So maybe you want to start with this group or perhaps this group or maybe this larger group. Just depends on what you would like to do. As I noted, that friend of mine that sells his products to these, to these businesses, he does it nationally. And this is exactly how he looks at them by that sales number. So he includes that as a filter. I can always get back to my results. If in fact you wanted to add those kinds of filters, you can select that sales volume like he does and then just drive in those particular types of records in certain ranges. So if you wanted that, those two, those three universes, what does that do to my total count? You can see it drops it down to 460. I can view that information, get to just those records. I also have the ability, it's one thing to say, gosh, there are 460 of those businesses across my county, but where in the world are they across your county? You can use this heat map tool to identify where they're at. Where you see the red areas, and you can always drill in, you can manipulate this map in any way you need to. You can always drill in a little bit and, and look at that density. So in that view, you can see you've got some here, some there, where it's yellow, there's less, green even fewer. We do have that top 50 breakdown by zip code. Notice you can even do this. You can take this tool and once you have changed it so that there's 300 or fewer in your view of that screen, and I'll just drill in a couple of times here, see if that, so the second time is going to change it, it will definitely be at 300 or fewer. It will then pinpoint all those locations and give you that information here. So you've got this legend that you can scroll through. Maybe you wanted to know where this Thompson construction was at. You can click on that business name and it will take you to that record. If there's a plus symbol, it simply means there's a couple at or around this location. And you can click on the arrow key to get to the next one. It just depends on what it is that you might need to do. So know that that tool can be used. It is also printable or can be made part of a PowerPoint presentation. I know from having done many of these programs around the country, I've had lenders that have attended these programs and they love this perspective. It gives them a sense of where these businesses are. It, it puts some meat on the bone as it relates to the uh, total number of records that you're talking about you could potentially sell to and let's let's do this let's let's open up this particular record every record is going to be set up just like this we're only looking at those verified records if it were an un, if if we were looking at unverifieds and this happened to be one of them there would be an uh, it would be shaded in gray and you would have a u there so notice I've got all of that business information here for that location, their web address, some social links that they use. The second section is always going to be an Indeed section. If they had a job that was posted through Indeed or Monster or Career Link, they would aggregate that information and get that to us nightly. So that would be filled in here. 
here's the industry profile. So we, we looked at all SIC codes, which is why it's coming up with all of these various options. This water damage res restoration re residential was one of those. That's why it's coming in this way. And I'll show you how we can change it to a primary. So we've got that information business profile. We won't necessarily have a business profile on every single business, but where we do, you should certainly take advantage of that information. We'll would provide you with some historical information about that business. We, of course, work closely with Google, so we have Google Maps embedded in, in here. In fact, you're probably familiar with uh, using your smartphone for maybe pulling up restaurants near you or gas stations near you. That's all of our data that Google uses to present that those options to you. I can always close that. I do have my business demographics, so we just updated them in July and they told us they had 13 employees. That goes into the factor to create the algorithm that then supports this dollar amount. So know that we have that. When we called, we were told that Larry Finley is in fact the owner of this company. Company news, we get this through Bing. So it'll either be about the business and chances are not, not gonna be a lot of news articles about this one company. So otherwise it'll be about the industry. So you can certainly read up on anything that you would find in there. If it were publicly traded, we'd have that stock information in there. You could click on that ticker symbol and get to that 10K information, et cetera. We have our business expenditures. Again, this is modeled information. You could even use, let's say that you were an accountant and you wanted to find companies that were spending on average annually some amount of money. You could use the various ranges for these amounts and use that as one of your filters under the heading of that business expenditures to drive in results related to your needs. So you could even use this business expenditures to produce the types of records that you would need to see. We then have some historical information followed by historical records. Notice this goes back to 09. When I click on any of these, it's going to link to a different database module. And I'll show you where you can identify that. So notice it is linked to the US historical business database module. And we've captured, we've got those number of years captured. Of course, we'll update 20 at the beginning of 21. I can use my slide if I wanted to go back in time, maybe I wanted to go back to 11 to uh, look at that record, I could certainly do so. Know that you can utilize this either in here or in this module itself. I can always get back to my listing of those records. I also have, if they have put up some type of collateral, which the only one that we see was back in 09. Uh, and, and, but if they put up some type of collateral for a, a note for a loan, that would be captured there. We also have nearby businesses because we have that latitude and longitude embedded in the background. And then we have the competitors report. So I have each of those listings as well. Let's do this. Let me go back. And I'm gonna revise my search slightly. And instead of utilizing these sales volume ranges, I'm gonna go back to my original group of 848. Now, we selected this plus symbol here. Watch what happens when, when I select search primary SIC codes only, meaning their primary line of business is going to be listed as one of these under this 1521. 
Watch what this does. So it kicked out some of those businesses like that restoration company. You know, they still do a form of construction, but we're, we don't want rest, restoration. We only want pure general contractors. So that's what that's going to drive in for me now. It'll only give me those records. But instead of continuing to use this search, let me do this one for you. I'm gonna remove that option and do a keyword search. Most of the time, people are utilizing the keyword to look at businesses across their, their particular community. So let's say I'm gonna select, and I'll do restaurants, because I happen to know that you guys have a few restaurants around your community. And instead of doing the county, I'll search for that first. Here's my all-inclusive for restaurants, but no, I could get very specific based on maybe the, 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 the type of food I would like or the type of restaurant that I might want to go to. Just depends, so we get that granular. But in this case, I'm gonna close down the county option and I'm gonna look for all restaurants and I'm gonna use my map option here and I will throw in number of employees so I'll grab a few of these ranges and also let's do them without web addresses so if you were in fact a web designer and you wanted to identify companies that don't have web addresses you could use this as an option so I'm gonna open my map now. And in this case, I have to tell it where to go. So I have to give it the, where do I want to land? You know, I could be putting in a physical address here and then the city and state. I could put, be putting in a zip code, a county and state. Let's just do, we'll just do Tulsa. And of course, okay, go. And it will drill into Tulsa. At that point in time, I have several options here. I could draw my own shape. So if I wanted, maybe I wanted to look at all those types of restaurants on, in this little area here. And you can see it's a, it's a click to start it, a click to change direction. And then when I'm ready, it'll be a double click to finalize it. So I'll double click here, and then it will calculate how many businesses, so this is restaurants that employ a certain number of employees and have no web addresses. There are 34 of them in that shape. If that's all I need, I can say done, and as you can see, my count is ready for me to, to view. So it just depends. I do wanna show you these other tools. I can do a true radius. Maybe I've put in your business address here in Tulsa in that, cert, in that Zoom 2 box. And this represents, let's pretend that this represents your location. I could do a true radius from that location. And you can see it, I'm just clicking, holding, and dragging, and it is calculating out how far I've gone. So right now, I'm nearly at two miles. Let's stop there, yeah. So I've got 61 in that two mile radius around the uh, city of Tulsa. So if that's all I need, again, I can say done, and then view my results. I also have the ability, I'm gonna make this just a smidge larger, and select that. I also have the ability, if I decided, you know what, I didn't want this entire radius, I could do something like this. I could say, oh, I don't wanna go this far to the north. So, and I'm gonna do this rather hastily. I am just gonna follow this outline, double click. Now I've got two results of those 101 up here. I can double click in there and exclude that area from my results and get a, then I'll get that new count of, of 99 at that point. So know that you could certainly alter anything after you've drawn your shape or, or use the radius. 
we can also overlay true boundaries. So it always starts with the, the, the state as the first boundary, but I could overlay zip codes, for example. So if I were interested in finding out how many of those businesses might match my criteria, and let's say it's in these, and you click in that box, sometimes I get a little click happy, you click in that box, give it time to calculate, and then advance to the next box, and it will tabulate how many are in each of those zip codes. If that's all you needed, you can say done and then view your results. I also, if a drive route would be helpful for you, I can return to my tools and I can create my own drive route. We could say, let's do, let's do Tulsa. Okay. And if it didn't like my description, my address, whatever here, it would turn red. But in this case, it should be green. There it is. And let's go to Stillwater. Okay. And there it's green. Now I have to create my buffer distance. So how far off of that main road do I want to look? Either to, to uh, north or south or, or east or west, depending on which direction the system goes. I'll say, you can notice you can go a maximum of 15 miles. I'll say, give me, I'll do a half mile each side. So 0.5 for a half a mile. And then it's a matter of just click, clicking on creating that route. Oh gosh, I didn't realize it was directly west. I thought it was kind of down a little bit. So we're, we're uh, here's our route and there are a total of 43 of those businesses that match my interest along this route. If that's what I, need to see, I can say done. I can say done, thank you. And then view my results. I can even take this a step further. Now I could download this information if I wanted to, do, or I could save it. I can also put it back on the map and have my stops all prepared. And you'll have, it'll always start off with this nationwide view and you'll use your plus symbol to start drilling in. It'll take about six or seven clicks to drill in, but it will eventually break out all of those locations along that route. You might have to recenter your screen a little bit, but it will eventually break out all of those results and give me that legend, which it's already produced on the left-hand side with all of those locations. And I'm just trying to get it so that the view, so that I can see all of them along this route. Oops, I, I went a little too large. So you can see that uh, there in Tulsa, and then of course, making your way towards, and you can always move this, making your way towards Stillwater. So it just depends on what you need to be able to do. Know that you can create those drive routes. I helped a salesman do that just the other day. Any questions uh, in regards to doing your search, producing the records, what the records look like? Any questions regarding that? If not, I would like to show you real quickly one of those other modules for consumers. Martha, do you see anything coming in there? No, we, no questions. Very good. Let me advance back to the home page. And I'll go to the consumer lifestyle. So if your business might be uh, B2C, or maybe it's B2B and B2C, you could certainly utilize this particular tool, maybe the new movers, new homeowners, because that's going to give you some insight about those people that are new to your community. Certainly the standard white pages, like what we used to see with the phone books, 
only this will give you uh, estimated home income and home value. So know that you could use any of these three modules to help you with that. I'll just go into the consumer lifestyles. So we get this information from various sources like membership subscriptions that people have, I, I was found and, and included in the database when I joined Petco's PALS membership club. And within probably a couple of months, I became a, or noted as a dog lover because of the products that I were, was buying there for my pet uh, at the time. So we're getting it from warranty cards, surveys that people have done, magazine subscriptions people are having sent. I'll just go right to the advanced search. And let's say that we were interested in, maybe you work for a nonprofit and you're looking to raise uh, perhaps some funds for an initiative that you have. If you were interested in finding charitable donors, we could do, a selection here and drive in. Let's just do the city of Tulsa. And I'll say go in this case. There's my Tulsa, Oklahoma. I can add that now. If I wanted to add another, another city that might be near Tulsa, I could do that. Contacts, it always defaults to all per household. I'm going to change it up to one because I don't want multiple records at the same address. I want to see one record. Notice I could include certainly home value or estimated income. I'm going to open up this lifestyles category and I mentioned charitable donors. It's the fourth one here. I'll click on that plus symbol so you can see what else is under or a part of charitable donors. So charitable donors or wildlife and environment donors. So I'll stick with charitable donors. I'm looking in Tulsa and notice there is a scoring system and it's zero through nine, but we will only show you records of people who score a six or higher. So when I was noticed through Petco with my dog, I came up as an active person because I was buying two big bags, 50 pound bags of dog food every month for my Fido, my wolf. <laughs> and that's how I became this active. So I was only buying once a month, but I was buying uh, larger amounts. So notice the same thing would be true for charitable donors. So across your community, I have 23,000 charitable donors that score in that six to nine range. So if that's what you needed, or maybe, maybe you want to look at some home income options. Maybe at that point you want to say, okay, so show me those charitable donors that are in these ranges. And you can grab whatever ranges you, you know, you don't have to necessarily do them all in order. You could skip a range. It just depends on what you want to do. But I'll just go with those four and see what that does. So now it drops it down to 5,000. That's still a lot of leads. I can view those records and I want to show you, of course, I've got this chart. I could chart all this information if I wanted to get a quick look-see at, and it's going to go right to that estimated house uh, home value, and it gives me that breakdown. So I can do it by state or zip code as well. Maybe I wanna look at the zip codes and see which zip code has the most opportunity for me. It just depends on how you want to frame it. But I can always get back to the records themselves and notice it does state that if you intend on using this for phone solicitation, and we've got a few phone numbers that are listed here, you should not be doing so without having the appropriate work done on the list, meaning the hygiene. We do that kind of work. We give you everything. It's the entire kitchen sink. But, but if you needed to be able to make phone calls, you can go back and send this list to the Do Not Call Registry, and they do a certain number for free, and then they begin charging you.
So know that you could have this list cleaned and then get back a list that you could in fact call those numbers that were available. So know that that is something that it, you are uh, certainly responsible for. Here's the record. Let's go into this first record. So I've got that physical address information. The fact that this person, now we don't call Verify Robert, but he is, everything we've seen about his record is he's married. Been in this home for about three years. There's that estimated household income and home value, followed by what the Census Bureau has. We always, we always add our own estimate based on the year of the census certainly coming up on a new year, as you well know. And then here are the lifestyle indicators. The only thing that we asked about were charitable donors. If I did another search, let's say for books and magazine buyers, he, Robert may not show up in that search simply because he's not active enough, even though he has some interest in that category. So that is available to you. And I want to show you another tool that we just added here about three weeks ago to this very module. And I'm gonna revise my search slightly. And I'm gonna add in, so we know we've got a lot of these uh, folks. In fact, I'm gonna kick out the, I wanna get back to that big number. What did we have before? I'll just remove that. So we had 23,000. Now I'm gonna throw in a caveat and I'm gonna say pets and I'll say dogs, but it could be any category. And I'll say show more options. And now instead of showing records, now watch what happens to my count when I add dogs to charitable donors. So now I've got this 26,000 records. Now watch what happens as I change it to match all that are selected. So it drops back to 6,100 because all of these 6,100 records will have, they're a charitable donor and a dog lover. So I've got that list now available to me that I can get to. So it just depends on how you want to uh, frame this, but know that you can utilize that information. I have a cousin, let's pretend for a moment and I'll tell you what he does. He uses, let's say Linda is a new customer of his. He's got a carpet and tile cleaning service. He'll pull up Linda's record and he'll show neighbors within a certain distance. Usually it's with when, within 0.1 or 0.2 blocks of that resident. And he'll get a new list. Let's just do 0.1 and enter. Now I've got a new list of all those 91 records, in fact, of those uh, uh, records of people that live near Linda. And what he does is he puts together a mailer and sends it out to those folks to let them know about his carpet and tile cleaning service. And that he has some business that he has in their area and would like to extend them. And he makes them a discounted, I think it's 10 or 15% off of their first order uh, of his business. So know that that is available and can be utilized. Any questions, because we're, we're at the bewitching hour where I'll finish up. Any questions regarding the U.S. business module or the consumer lifestyles? We don't have any questions, Bill. Okay. Well, we do actually have one more question and I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, there it is. And that was quick. It's almost startled me on the other screen. So here's a question for you. If you'd like to participate in this, you could earn, as it notes here, a $20 gift card. If you would like, you can go into Reference USA and identify how many coffee shops there are in Tulsa County, Oklahoma, and you can email me what you believe that total to be. And the first email that I receive with the correct 
amount will receive a $20 gift card. I'll reach back out to you via that email and get your address and get that email or get that gift card sent to you for, for Starbucks. So if you'd like to participate in that, certainly jot down that question. How many coffee shops are there in Tulsa County, Oklahoma? And my email address is bill.carlson at infogroup.com. Looking forward to many responses. And Martha, it's all yours. Thanks, Bill. Great information. Um, if you would like any help using these resources, uh, we invite you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment with Research Center staff, and uh, they'll we'll work with you on a one-to-one -one basis and show you how to, to uh, do even more research in these systems that uh, Bill's not been able to cover because he's just, he's just skimmed the, the surface here. There are so many applications for these, for these databases. And we're glad to help you with that. If you want to do that, uh, contact the Libraries Ask Us department. Just go to our library's website, tulsalibrary.org, and uh, there you can click on Ask Us. Uh, you can send your request in by email. You can call us at 918-549-7323 uh, and ask to set up a, an appointment uh, for a virtual uh, journey of any of our databases. Uh, thanks to Bill uh, for sharing his vast knowledge and expertise with us today, and to you for coming to our virtual event. Uh, our next webinar on September 2nd will look at Reference USA as a tool for nonprofits. That's September 2nd, 4 to 5 p.m. And uh, if you know any, any non nonprofits, uh, be sure to let them know about this. There are some wonderful resources that the system has applications for, for uh, nonprofits. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you all.